Do your sales agents have specific goals in mind and do they know exactly what action they have to take in order to accomplish those goals. So today I really want to talk to you about a framework for sales team motivation. Um, having worked with dozens of merchant sales teams, um, business to business sales teams, what I've seen is there's really a lack of framework around this concept of goals and action steps. So when you talk to sales managers, they're like, oh yeah, we really encourage our people to set goals or we have action steps that we talk about, but there's not really a framework or an organized way that they deal with goals and action steps. So let me today give you that framework briefly and just talk a little bit about the way to structure this and set it up correctly. So number one, you need to make sure that you have a buy-in from your individual sales team members with these goals. Now, there are two different types of goals that you're going to have. You're going to have your minimum expectation goals, and then you're going to have your stretch goals. Okay. Now, the minimum expectation goals, these are the same for everybody. They're not different for different people. There's a very structured, written, you know, minimum expectation, and every sales team must have these. Even if you are an independent, you know, you have a 1099 sales team, you should have a minimum expectations. And so, you know, you might say, well, I can't do that. They're not W-2 employees. Well, I would beg to differ there. If I hire a 1099 contractor to come put a new roof on my house and he comes there and he puts half the shingles on my house and then leaves and tells me the job is complete, it's okay for me to say, no, it's not. We have minimum expectations. You've got to shingle the entire roof, right? So you have to be careful about what those minimum goals are because they can't be action oriented. It's not, you have to prospect two hours a day. That's where you run into issues with W2 and 1099. But what it can be is we only consider our partners to be active if they submit X number of deals over the course of, you know, whatever, right? So you can have minimum expectations in that way. And then you have consequences if minimum expectations are not hit. A minimum expectation is a standard, which means if it falls below the standard, it is in some way unacceptable. And so you have to decide how is it unacceptable. Some of you have W-2 uh, sales teams. Well, in that case, if they fall below the unacceptable standard, they get fired. Okay, they get terminated automatically. They get terminated without exception. These are the minimum expectations. These are things that you must do in order to keep your job, in order to maintain an active relationship. But beyond that, we then want to have stretch goals. Now, Stretch goals are set individually by individual agents in conversations with their sales managers. In my opinion, this is the most important thing. This managing this process is the most important thing that sales managers can do. And it is also the thing that they most rarely do, which is like, why don't we do this? Okay. Here's what I mean. You should be having individual one-on-one -on -one conversations with every salesperson that is an active member of your team at least once a month. And during that conversation, you're going to ask them, what is your goal? What is your stretch goal? We know what the minimum expectations are. What are you trying to accomplish this month? And so those, those conversations as part of a framework, they have to happen. You have to make sure that you're having these conversations every month. Otherwise, I don't really know what you're doing as a sales manager. Well, I do know what you're doing. What you're doing is you're putting out fires all day and you're spending all of your time on people that are never going to make very many sales. And that's really a waste of your time and resources. Manage those people with the minimum expectations. They have to hit those or they're not going to be part of your team. Trust me, they will get creative to hit the minimum expectation. Spend your time trying to help people that are average or higher performers, help them achieve a new level of success. So how do you do that? Well, you start with the stretch goal that they are giving to you. Now, once they give you a stretch goal, you're then going to take that goal and you're going to break that down into daily action steps. Okay. What does this agent need to do every day to hit the goal? So the math is surprisingly easy when you sit down and think about it for a second. What's their closing rate? Okay. So we know exactly how many contacts they need, right? So if they want to make 10 sales and we know that they close at 30%, then they need to make 30 contacts. Like this is pretty basic stuff, right? So we know they need 30 contacts. Well, now how are they prospecting, right? Are they going door to door? Okay. Well, um, 
how many doors do they have to go to to get a um, a prospect or someone that could eventually become a qualified contact, right? So people that they're just having a conversation, depending on what words you use. The words are very important, though, and it's part of the framework. You have to have it structured. So you're going to say, okay, how many conversations with a decision maker do you need to have in order to get a qualified decision maker that you're then going to close at X percentage? It's like, well, I need to have 100 conversations with qualified decision makers in order to have 30 of them be a real qualified decision maker, a good contact that I can make there, um, a presentation, whatever, again, whatever words you want to use for it. Then I'm going to close those at 30%. So I'm going to make 10 sales. Okay. So now we know you need to have a hundred conversations, right? Well, how many do you need to have a day? Well, how many days this month are you going to work? Right? Maybe that rep is taking a one week vacation. Well, then they're only working three weeks. That means we only have 15 days. So we're going to take a hundred divided by 15. Maybe they're working a full month. So they're working 20 days. So they need to have five conversations a day. Okay. So we have our goals, which are minimum goals, which are set by the company and are in writing and are standards. They're prerequisites for an active relationship with the, the organization. Then we have our stretch goals. They're set by the salesperson. The top job of the sales manager is to help them set these goals and then break them down into action steps. Now, sometimes you get to the end of the action step and you say, well, that means you need to have 47 good conversations a day. Is that realistic? And the salesperson goes, no. Okay, so let's change your goal right? Your, your action steps and your goals have to align with each other. Okay. Now, once you have that conversation though, then you have the action steps. Then the last part is you then help this salesperson to track their action steps. You say, well, this, James, how do we, how do we centralize this? How do we scale this? How do we make this the same for everybody? You don't, you don't, and you don't. This is what sales management is actually all about. It is about helping individual sales performers. Now, do you standardize, you know, you standardize everything else. Like I am a huge believer in standardization and, you know, cutting costs through scale, of course, but you standardize everything else. You don't standardize this. Okay. This is the thing that you do. This is the thing that a robot can't do. This is the thing that salesforce.com can't do. This is what you do. You help these salespeople get their stretch goals. Then you help them figure out their custom action steps that they need to take. Then you help them create a system of tracking to where you can check in with them weekly to see if they're hitting the action steps necessary to achieve their stretch goals. That's a framework for motivating your sales team. Try it out. I'll give you a, a, a little, little tip, right? A little spoiler alert. It's a lot of work. It's really hard. Okay. It actually takes real management skill. If you can do it, you'll have a high-performing sales team, no question about it. Hey, I hope you have an awesome day.